So, uh, Proxim is a releasing our Edge 1015 product to the North American marketplace in the next couple of weeks. Um, that product is already out in beta form to uh, several of our key uh, customers and partners uh, for evaluation. Uh, we're almost at the end of that cycle, so we expect the product to be out very, very soon. So this is an opportune time for us to uh, introduce the product to our key distributors, uh, customers, and partners. Um, I also will spend a brief time uh, updating everyone on the latest uh, product from the uh, latest product line from Proxim. Uh, a couple things about uh, housekeeping here. I am at home today, as most of us are, I'm assuming. Um, I have a, a two uh, kids that are in school, and this is an extension of the school district today, so uh, they're in the final, so if you hear some background noise, it's just my kids um, getting their grades from their finals that they're taking today. So Proxim is one of the most established companies in the wireless industry. Uh, we established our position in the industry before anyone else was even at the table, maybe even whatever is even the table uh, to be established at. We have a long, long legacy uh, of uh, products. Um, when I, what's interesting about our background, however, is when I tell people that I work at Proxim Wireless, I also ask them if you've ever heard of Proxim. Uh, not surprisingly, most haven't. Uh, I can then follow that up with the next time you're driving and you are at an intersection, uh, you look up at that video camera that's, uh, that's recording your image at that moment in time, there's a very, very good chance it's connected to the network via Proxim Radio. Uh, you can find that not only here uh, in the US, but also around the globe. There's very few places in this world where there's not Proxim radios deployed. Uh, so it's, it's a it's very uh, proud lineage and heritage for us to say that we are certainly an international worldwide company with millions of radios uh, sold and distributed and deployed uh, worldwide. Uh, Proxim, we've always been innovative, uh, but you won't see big splashes of glitz in our messaging as we roll out our latest technology to many of the industries we serve. Um, we just simply and quietly continue to provide highly reliable products to all the industries with all the features that uh, the wireless consumers require. And we've done so for over 30 years. Um, today's discussion about the edge is no exception to that. And I hope that uh, we'll learn more about, you'll learn more about uh, what that lineage is and, and what the product is capable of doing. Um, our overall product strategy today is taking three paths. Uh, at the high end of our product line, we have the BMEX, which is a state-of-the-art uh, antenna technology, uh, offering the best uh, beam steering capability in the industry today. Um, we combine the BMEX antenna with our industry standard radio technology and switching capability. Um, that is in our 10,000 series product, which is the 10200 today and the 10100 as well. And then of course, the third path we uh, we have while we're going down uh, is the edge product, which is taking advantage of the cost aggressive innovations in the marketplace. Uh, we use the same industry standard technology and switching capability, uh, and we're combining that together with uh, our extreme reliability, which you can find in all the Proxim, Proxim products uh, we deliver. So all of that is uh, all of that heritage is uh, is incorporated to some degree in the edge platform. So although the edge is placed at the lower end uh, of the industry pricing, um, it has quite a bit of capability, which I hope to demonstrate and show today. Uh, some of what the proximal heritage looks like in the edge: uh, extreme reliability. Um, product compatibility uh, with all the radios that we have out there and established customer networks. Uh, we got to keep, we must keep compatibility at the forefront uh, of our designs. And of course, uh, what the other thing that uh, comes along with the uh, Edge product uh, is the unmatched support that we offer from tools to over 30 years of experience captured on our 
support side, um, unprecedented support is, is one of the keys that we've built um, our product and our legacy uh, on. As do all the props and products, the Edge also inherits Warp uh, at its core. Uh, Warp has been in enhancement and refinement mode for 25 years now. Uh, incorporated within Warp is our uh, clear connect interference mitigation. Uh, it also includes mobility. So as in all of the um, products that we ship, um, Warp is at the core, uh, clear connect, mobility, um, and you also get the added advantage of having the switching uh, capability that we offer for network integration. Uh, this also includes the state-of-the-art QoS uh, for traffic, traffic engineering and optimization, uh, which is also uh, an outcome of our uh, work development. The Edge platform uh, for us at Proxum represents innovation, uh, performance, scalability, and reliability. And this is all done at a very aggressive price. Uh, so we're trying to bring in as much of the heritage as we can from our existing product line, uh, as I've mentioned multiple times now, uh, but, but at the same time offering it at a much more aggressive price that's targeting um, specific industries. So at Proxum, after 35 plus years, um, we've learned that we cannot be everything to every customer in the industry. Uh, we've had to focus and build on our strengths. And I believe that one of our key strengths is understanding the needs of our customers. So for quite a long time in the industry, performance was equated with speed, and we got caught up in that model as well. Um, Turns out that speed and throughput is not always the driver. It's always the first top of the list discussion point, or at least it has been traditionally, but with the added encryption and capability that's required for different industries, um, speed is, it turns out, is, is, is never really a key component unless you're talking about carrier grade backhaul and, and specialized types of uh, network operators. So the edge was designed to provide the performance requirements to meet and the pricing requirements to meet the specific industries in IoT, SCADA, WISP, and industrial automation applications. Um, it's designed to have just enough performance today, but with the ability to scale to meet future needs. Uh, it's it's designed to be adaptive with various built-in antenna options and, and provide expandable bandwidth capabilities. Uh, and as, the, as I mentioned previously, it's designed to be compatible for incorporation into existing Proxum networks, and there's many of those out there. Um, the Edge pricing is about half of the current 800 series products. So if you're familiar with, if you're familiar with our products and have sold our products in the past, you'll understand what that pricing looks like. Uh, the Edge is sold and distributed the same as all products, uh, props and products are sold today. We have a quick bridge uh, variant and a multi-point variant. Um, of course, the quick bridge is a full link, top in a box, uh, includes everything that you need to get started immediately, a uh, unique IP address assignment, um, a unique network name. Uh, essentially, you can take two boxes out into the field, mount one box on one pole, put it in the direction of the other pole, Mount the second system radio, turn those two on, and they should be up and linking uh, if you have clear line of sight and have done a, a reasonable job of alignment. The multi point product uh, we sell and we're producing and distributing a base station, it's a DS3, uh, means it has a 35 degree sector antenna um, and, is, and uh, subscriber units, uh, separately uh, selling the subscriber units. Uh, bear in mind that the quick bridge, from a scalability standpoint, can be broken into two subscriber units. So as your network scales and requirements change, 
you can take a single link segment and convert that to a multi point segment and leverage the assets that you uh, initially deployed into that new segment. Uh, last but not least, the, uh, the unit also supports mobility. Uh, our fast connect mobility uh, is gaining popularity. It's been used in the past to some degree, but it's uh, becoming more and more prominent in the products today. Uh, the Edge product is designed to be rugged, extremely reliable, and meet the standards of all of the Proxima Outdoor products that have come before it. What those standards means is that there will be, well, I should say there are already well over 100,000 Proxima radios in operation today, which were deployed 15 years ago. So, what to meet that standard with the Edge, a properly deployed edge product today is expected to still be in operation in 2035. Uh, it's a reasonable, impressive, it's a, I believe, an impressive number. Those numbers are real. Um, I'm a, I do all the certification training for Proxim. Every one of my certification classes, I have at least one or two students that are there to learn about the new technology because they're rolling out an upgrade to their 15 year old MP.11 deployment. Uh, the, the Edge is also designed to be easy to deploy and use. Uh, to do this, we take advantage of the low cost innovation of the Bluetooth low energy interface. Uh, Proxim Blue Connect is our new uh, smartphone application. Uh, it's designed to make the job of initial setup and configuration very easy. Uh, it also benefits the model of today's generation of field integrators. Uh, Another added advantage to Blue Connect is it can be used as a troubleshooting tool when unexpected issues arise with, within the network. So simply adding this, downloading it from uh, Google Play or the Apple Store, uh, you can install this on your smartphone, take it out in the field, and if that radio is enabled to accept Bluetooth connections um, and you have the credentials to do so, you'll be able to log in and uh, uh, troubleshoot that right here. Securing the network is a top requirement of the industry today. Uh, and of course, radio management is no exception. Uh, the, the edge inherits all the existing security from our industry standard products plus the DLE interface. Uh, the BLE interface is designed specifically for initial setup and then to be disabled uh, once initial com uh, configuration is complete. That's a safety a security concern. Um, it can be re-enabled from the NOC or from uh, uh, a simple login for troubleshooting uh, when a truck rolls scheduled for uh, maintenance uh, or some other issues has arisen. As long as you can communicate with the radio, uh, then you should be able to re-enable uh, the VLE interface and go through the process of troubleshooting. So the Edge is also uh, designed to fully support fast connect mobility. This is a fast growing uh, uh, segment of our market. It's a fast growing segment of our industry. Um, by adding the GPS support for location and mapping, um, when you combine that with PVA, um, that's utilized for location mapping and location tracking in the, in the case of mobility. Um, the only caveat to this is the Edge only has a single port. Um, so an external source, such as a 12 volt PLE device, is required to power the Edge in a moving vehicle. Unlike the the 10,000 series products, which uh, include a uh, console port, uh, which supports um, natively a 12 volt uh, power option. So we expect to see the, the uh, Edge product used robustly in mobility. Uh, the BS3 base station is certainly capable of covering uh, the segment, but when you combine this with the BSX product, which I'll talk a little bit later, Talk about a little bit later um, and using um, the edge uh, endpoints in vehicles 
uh, you have a pretty awesome combination for a mobile solution. Uh, when discussing power, uh, not only mobility, but the um, the edge provides a, a pretty flexible power bus. Um, those options include um, with two by two uh, operation, the 802.3AF um, capability. Uh, if you move to four by four, you're going to need the 802.3AT uh, uh, capability. And of course, it still supports the passive PoE uh, sources uh, as all of the other Roxon products uh, support today. And like all other uh, products that we ship, all edge radios will ship with a 30 watt PoE device, passive, uh, with at no extra charge for the package. Uh, so, as far as scalability and flexibility goes, the uh, the edge, from an antenna option standpoint, uh, is quite amazing. So the internal antenna is a 2x2x2, two by two by two, 15 dBi, 35 degree panel antenna. All edge radios, however, come with a 4x4x4 four by four by four external antenna option. Uh, and this is to support scaling uh, and changing network requirements. Uh, also, um, if you have issues with uh, SCADA or uh, IoT device sensors that are at some distance and you need to reach out to those, uh, the 4x4 four four option gives you uh, some advantages, which I'll, I'll demonstrate here in just a minute or two. Um, bear in mind that the, it's worth noting, I should say, that 4x4 four four operation is not going to be available until the end of uh, January. So sometime in Q1 2021, um, it will be a simple software upgrade. Um, it will also require a license upgrade to operate the radio with 4 by 4 operation. <clears throat> As I mentioned, uh, range was a, a consideration. I'm considering, say, pipeline management, um, IoT sensors on the roadside, that type of thing. So. Um, we did some range testing uh, it's, uh, for, the, for the edge specifically and using some specific uh, antennas. Uh, you can see that um, the effective range for the quick bridge is very typical of a, of a 2 by 2 15 dBi panel antenna, it's 3 to 5 miles. However, with the proper selection of a 4 by 4 external antenna, you can extend that range out as far as 25 miles. So we are providing you with quite a bit of capability in this flexible antenna option. Uh, from a multi-point standpoint, of course, very similar, but the ranges are, are, are much different. Uh, for the uh, the uh, distance will be dropping down to 10 to 12 miles with a uh, with a good quality 4x4 four four antenna. And then, of course, internally, it's back down to the two to three uh, mile range, uh, maybe it's up, up to five for that uh, 15 dBi panel antenna. Uh, for the distributors and partners on the uh, watching this in a webinar today, um, ordering the product is very similar to all of our other products. Um, the SKUs are all available. Everything is in the price book uh, for Q1, I believe. And of course, your sales reps are available to assist you with orders. Uh, and unlike our competition out there, the Edge product is not available on Amazon. Okay, so to talk about our uh, products overall here for a moment, just to take a minute and, and see where things are. As I mentioned, we have three main primary paths uh, in our product line. The edge is just that third path, which we're venturing down today. Um, Proxim provides um, point to point, point to multi point deployment um, in a variety of uh, variations. The series is broken into four lines, distinct lines. You have the BMX, which is the 10250. That's an integrated antenna only, of course, because it's using our state-of-the-art beam steering technology uh, in that antenna. We have the industrial standard product, which is the 10200 and 10100 series products. 
Uh, again, they come in a very variations of uh, different uh, antenna sizes or different ranges and flexibility around your applications. We have the GX824, that's a quick bridge only uh, product. And we now have the Edge 1015. All the products uh, include the same switching capability for integration uh, and the security options to meet uh, your customer requirements across the board. So in our multi-point product architecture, uh, most of you are familiar with how this is sold. It's a base station. Base station options are the 10250 BSX, which is a 75 degree uh, sector of coverage with a beam steered uh, plus and minus 30 degree uh, antenna. That's an electronic reformed antenna uh, based on some options, which I'll discuss in a few minutes. Uh, it's a 17 degree antenna unique to each endpoint that it discovers in its uh, field of view. We have the traditional 10150 BS9 and BS1. That's a 90 degree sector antenna and a 10 degree sector antenna. And of course, we have the Edge now 1015 BS3, which is a 35 degree sector antenna. Uh, some subscribers come in various configurations. Um, the breakdown primarily is full rate, full size, and then we have rate limited, license upgradable in the compact size. Uh, one notable uh, uh, inter inter introduction here is that uh, the 10200 CPE and 10200 CPA replace the 10100 series compact products. Uh, so that will be what we'll be going with moving forward. That product has the upgraded CPU as well as um, a 256 bit encryption in case you're selling into a government agency or something that requires the higher level of uh, security uh, and encryption. Bear in mind that all of our products ship by default with 128 bit uh, AES encryption. And on top of that, you're already running a secure proprietary protocol in WARP. So you are basically encrypting something that's not necessarily readable. So you're encrypting a secure protocol. Uh, when you do that with 256, you're double encrypting uh, something that's a little bit above uh, what's necessary, but uh, sometimes it's a checkbox that needs to be checked. Uh, one notable exception on this list, of, as I described, is the XP product that is simply designed to be a multi-point endpoint that provides 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi access natively. Uh, so if you have an existing uh, multi-point segment and you have a shop or some type of industrial uh, location where um, users will need, will need access uh, or could benefit from access to the network, then the cross-point uh, XP product is, uh, is designed for that specific need. Uh, we have the quick bridge, which is sold uh, as what I call the hop in a box. Uh, it contains three variations of antennas. You have the 22 DVI antenna, uh, and you have the long range 28 DVI antenna. That's a two by two, two foot by two foot um, uh, footprint. And then, of course, the external uh, capable and tight connectorized uh, uh, endpoints. Uh, you can go up to a six foot dish on those. Uh, if you really need to reach out uh, at some distance. Uh, the other quick bridge model that we have is the GX824. That's a carrier grade back call for us. It's an FTD operation, short to medium range. Variations in that are one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot um, uh, uh, antennas, dish antennas, sorry. And, um, and now, of course, in that fourth line, we have the edge. Uh, QB, which is going to prevent, uh, provide you with a cost effective yet reliable backhaul option for customers who are looking for that type of uh, uh, implementation and solution. So, to talk about BMX for a moment here, um, this has been a, a really very, very uh, Productive and very well designed product for us. Uh, we've gone head to head with competition, with the competition who is also producing 
uh, beam steering solutions, and we've literally been slaughtering them. So um, it's not been sold through as much as we thought it was uh, initially. However, sales have taken off on this product. Um, uh, as soon as our customers are exposed to the capability, uh, certainly in the LISP marketplace, uh, where you have uh, extended range and uh, uh, large numbers of uh, endpoints to, to service, the VMAX has certainly shined. Um, we're also able to um, steer um, not only the antenna, but we can also steer bandwidth capability uh, with some of the things that this is providing. Uh, however, not just from a performance standpoint, but it also provides uh, ease of installation in, in that uh, in the quick bridge format, for instance, the, uh, the QB10250 LKX, uh, it's self-aligning. So if you just get it close, then the antenna will take over and align itself endpoint to endpoint. Uh, when it does that, it's maximizing signal capability as it's always doing uh, with both multi-point to subscriber, or uh, base station to subscriber and quick bridge. Um, so you're going to get maximized signal and also some uh, added gain. The uh, the other interesting thing about this product is that it has the ability to uh, operate and locate reflective shots. So unlike the integrator who's doing the deployment, they might not think to try a different angle or approach to a, a non-line site shot. With the BMX and some added training, uh, the integrator can go into the field and test severe angles. Uh, types of deployment for reflective shots. And this particular platform is exceptionally good at that. Uh, it can isolate multipath and pick up uh, reflective shots uh, in, in, uh, off of solid surface in, your, in urban environments. Uh, it's spectacular doing that. Uh, as I mentioned, you get some um, added performance and capability when that um, beam angle is properly aligned. Uh, that's up to 6 dB of gain uh, in signal, which is not, uh, which is quite a bit. It's not something that uh, is a small amount. Um, of course, that also includes the added scan radio, uh, another, another feature of this product that's a little bit overlooked. That secondary scan radio uh, gives us two fundamental uh, pieces of capability. One is that when you operate in DFS, if uh, you get a DFS detection or false detect, and the radio changes channel. The scan radio has pre capped uh, channels and has also analyzed those channels for the best operation. So you're not switching to a channel blindly, you're switching to an optimized channel that's pre capped so it's ready for immediate operation. Uh, other vendors, when they change channel, they usually change to a non-DFS channel, which limits their capability. Uh, they're typically changing blindly to a channel that may have a severe interference and may not provide the performance that you need. Uh, in this particular radio, we're able to do uh, pre cac so it's immediate. We can use the entire spectrum, uh, and we're changing to uh, uh, an interference less um, uh, channel for, for really good performance uh, during that change. Uh, it also supports um, slow mobility uh, in one sector. Um, it's particularly good at nomadic or first responder or support vehicle type of, type of mobility um, where the endpoint is not predictable. In the linear form or route form, say like a bus or train or something like that, we're predicting where we're going. We can predict handoff points and so forth. The BMEX is designed for mobility nomadically. So uh, it can track and then create a unique and uh, electronically formed antenna for each of those endpoints as they move around, uh, providing a maximum signal. It's excellent at doing that as well. Um, in our industry standard product, the 10200 and 10100, series of uh, radio features. Um, we uh, provide uh, all the easy setup um, with two different GUI options today. Um, you get all the interference mitigation and uh, interference mitigation tools. 
um, such as uh, satellite density, dynamic data rate selection. Um, we also provide um, DFS operations for full spectrum use. Um, we also provide extensive monitoring capability uh, on individual endpoints. Um, this combined with PVA uh, can be exceedingly valuable, but if you're just, mon if you're just uh, monitoring radios and performance uh, standalone, um, there's plenty of, there's more information than you can actually probably consume. Um, the 10200 series uh, is capable of 256 bit encryption as well as its GPS positioning ready. Uh, so, uh, with the GPS passive antenna uh, uh, that you have to add uh, as an external um, product, uh, it will be um, automatically picked up uh, from a location standpoint and altitude standpoint uh, by PVA. We also include uh, performance tools for measurement uh, and capability during troubleshooting. Uh, and during deployment. Uh, from a security standpoint, um, of course, it's one of the top issues today and top requirements of all deployments that we uh, we have in, in the industry. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it can be something repetitive here, but the uh, a, uh, ASCCM 128 bit encryption is included on all of our products by default. Uh, then in the 10200 series products, uh, you'll have the capability of running the 256 bit encryption when that's required. We also offer a 10,000, the 10100 series variant, the 10100S, which is a secure version uh, that uh, uh, supports 256 bit encryption. Everything else uh, we've discussed basically the uh, switch management security. Um, now added to that is TSL 1.2 uh, and custom SSL certification. That's a uh, say the past 12 months, and then um, of course the switch for integration uh, is the same on all of our products. You get full single and double uh, tagging for VLANs. You get an, an extensive array of QoS. Uh, capability, which is probably the best in the marketplace today from a wireless standpoint. Uh, we have a full array of filtering, a uh, variety of packet attributes, flood control, uh, goes on and on and on. So for the price of a radio and switch combination, you're getting quite a powerful switch that will meet the needs of any edge switch, certainly, and can integrate into uh, uh, all modern uh, traffic engineered uh, deployments. So that's the update on the um, product line. Uh, just to talk about um, our support model, scan tool, you know, our different the tools that we did that we provide for um, uh, troubleshooting management. Our main fundamental tool for deployment and troubleshooting is scan tool. It's at the core uh, of our product that allows users to locate and access all radios in the network. Uh, it's designed to be a deployment tool, which allows you to modify the IP address. You do not need to be on the same segment uh, as the uh, 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 units themselves. Uh, and you can change that um, address real time uh, from that point of view and bring it onto the segment that uh, you presumably are, uh, have configured your NIC card. And then once that occurs, um, you can then launch the web GUI and do um, configuration directly from the scan tool. It also has the ability to work with um, radios that have been maybe abandoned or there's some type of uh, problem with uh, gaining access to it. So it has a capability. If you are at the radio location and plug into the DOE, you can reload and reset the radio. So you can reset the factory default, or if there's been some type of surge or something that's occurred, you can actually reload uh, the core software on top of the Linux operating system that we're running in the background. Our latest link calculator uh, is quite an amazing piece of technology. Uh, it's turned out to be very valuable in a variety of ways. Uh, it is the primary tool, uh, design tool used by the Proxim SE team. Um, uh, many of our integrators uh, and partners have uh, come to um, uh, greatly appreciate this tool. Um, it's got the Google Earth API in integration in it. 
um, which is combined with our uh, internal knowledge of our radio and antenna attributes. Um, based on that, we can come up with some very, very accurate predictions. Um, it also provides um, uh, a very good link performance capability for deployment. Um, deployment uh, will allow you to see if you've got decent alignment or maybe there's some other issue that you've not um, considered uh, based on the performance that was predicted. Of course, interference is one of the biggest uh, uh, issues that we'll run into that will degrade performance. However, from a, from a uh, basic design standpoint, you get a, a reasonable amount of uh, performance uh, benchmark uh, that you can uh, certainly deploy to. The other feature that, uh, that, it, that it provides for deployment is azimuth and elevation settings. Uh, because it's using the Google Earth uh, API and we were able to locate the endpoints directly at the location of the mounting assets, it gives you exceedingly accurate azimuth and elevation readings. So deployment becomes very, very quick. Uh, alignment, if the aligner, uh, the alignment team or deployment team it uses those azimuth and elevation settings with, say, their own uh, uh, smartphone based compass. Uh, they should be very, very close to uh, dead on from a, an alignment standpoint. Uh, one other aspect for the uh, distributors out there and um, uh, reselling partners is that uh, using the lead calculator uh, to build the network and structure the network, um, based on that, it creates a bomb, and from that, it will do a quote generator. Uh, that quote generation can be customized to meet. Um, uh, to look like uh, your own type of uh, quote, incorporating in um, company name and a variety of attributes that uh, make it look very much, make it look and feel very much like a, a quote was generated directly. Uh, the other uh, aspect of our product line to finish this whole thing out is network management, and of course we have our PBA product for that. Um, PBA. Uh, is our primary NMS tool. It can be used as a standalone tool for large networks. Uh, it can also be used as a, an NMS augmentation to an existing uh, NMS tool uh, at a customer site. Uh, it's extremely powerful uh, and, and certainly capable of, uh, or certainly great assistance to uh, the management of uh, large numbers of assets in large, in large uh, networks. Uh, it provides some self-documentation information uh, about the network. As you build out the, the network and you have PDA running, it's automatically picking up the inventory, uh, mapping the devices for you. Um, uh, it's also picking up um, segment names or uh, system names, uh, which can then be uh, grouped into segments. Um, and it gives you a really good uh, understanding of overall performance and individual link performance and uh, channel coverage. So we have this uh, ability to provide an overview of uh, how channels are being utilized for channel reuse, uh, uh, again, on large scale networks. Uh, to fit into the IT model, uh, and there's many different ecosystems out there from a IT standpoint, PBA can be implemented in a whole host of uh, ways. Um, all shown here on the slide, dedicated server, you know, work, uh, VMs, cloud-based. Uh, it supports up to 10,000 nodes on a, a single instance. Um, 50 concurrent users uh, can be, um, and those are, those are users that are created in the, in the system itself uh, with custom views associated with whatever their role is uh, as a network operator. Uh, let's see here. So we've got uh, inventory is uh, obviously you can manually uh, introduce inventory. You can automatically induce an inventory. Uh, there's some configuration on the radio um, on the radios that are uh, that will assist with this type of thing. Uh, so it's good to get some training uh, around uh, how to integrate um, more. Um, Proxim asset deployment uh, when using a uh, PDA uh, management tool. It's 
got some fantastic capability as far as being able to log into the radios and configure, running um, configuration profiles and doing bulk um, deployments of configurations. Um, this uh, allows you to do scheduled uh, upgrades, so scheduled changes. You can, for instance, change your uh, AES encryption weekly if you have a rolling um, uh, encryption change governance. Um, uh, we certainly can support uh, all types of uh, events uh, like that on a scheduled basis. And of course, uh, and being an NMS package, it's got a, it's got a multitude of reporting and statistics collection. As I mentioned, uh, you have the ability to um, create views uh, and reports specifically for uh, user logins, tied to those user logins. To take that a step further, we also have um, a dashboard with detailed information, uh, and that dashboard can also be uh, custom viewed or custom built for a particular login. So if you have um, supervisory uh, uh, users that have a specific need for information versus uh, engineering users, uh, or maybe there's a deployment team, so you've got design uh, deployment teams that want to look at channel usage uh, or how different segments are, are operating, uh, you have the ability to, to contour this in any other in any way. It also has the ability to be uh, uh, at to provide for redundancy, which is a hot swap capability, self-managed. So uh, with the second license instance uh, running on a, on, a, on a second server, um, the two databases will stay in sync continuously. Uh, they automatically trip. So if a server, one server fails, the second server takes over, uh, and vice versa, they'll go back and forth. Uh, the only caveat to that is when uh, the server uh, swap occurs, uh, remote access will have to be re reinitialized. Uh, it's a very simple thing to set up uh, and works beautifully. And then one last aspect of PVA that is uh, often overlooked is that we have the Northbound interface, which is a REST, uh, RESTful API. Um, it is uh, capable of integrating uh, custom integrations for specific uh, needs uh, when you're integrating with a secondary AMS package. It's not utilized very often. Um, in fact, I only know of a couple implementations of it. Um, however, those implementations, they are very happy with what they were, were able to receive uh, when they combine the two, uh, the two packages together. So it's just something to consider um, when you're selling a large network with uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of nodes, um, PBA is something to certainly um, talk to your customers about. Or if you're a customer, end customer, something to consider. Okay. So uh, I went pretty quickly there. Um, got through that in 45 minutes. So uh, I open that up. I'll open it up to questions. If there are any questions. There's one question there, Andrew. Do you see it? I don't. Let's see. How do I look at that? I can um, I can just read it off if it's easier. Question. Let's see. It says was reviewed, <laughs> so my view must be different. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so the the attendee is asking if you can go back to the new product and provide a review, a quick review again. Maybe if you can go back okay. to that slide. Can do that. Let me get me to see my way back there. See where I am here. So the new product. Excellent. So we have this slide here. Uh, any specific questions about uh, the product? Uh, as I mentioned, um, it's a two by two by two internal antenna. Uh, with the capability of running a 4x4x4 four by four by four external antenna. Uh, it has a GPS, uh, a reverse, uh, reverse SMA port on it as well for the GPS antenna. Uh, it's an AC platform running on uh, work protocol. So there's no Wi-Fi uh, code anywhere near it. It's just simply a chipset that we've now repurposed 
for our own purposes. Uh, channel size support, uh, 204080. Um, it's, uh, it's rated for 100 meg uh, and 200 meg uh, via upgrade. Um, got the Bluetooth capability and integration. IP67 obviously uh, is very important to uh, our legacy. Uh, it's mid-size form factor, so it's pretty good for uh, roadside um, um, mounting. Uh, you know, the small, it's an eight by, uh, eight by six by two um, with the internal antenna. Uh, so um, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it's not a huge overwhelming size uh, product. It's actually downsized uh, somewhat from our standard uh, 10 one hertz series product. Um, but it's just a slightly larger than our compact product. Um, and it's got this uh, stainless steel mounting kit, which gives you um, both um, uh, access for um, uh, azimuth and elevation in both directions. So it can point up, down, side to side. And it's metal. By the way, this is a fully metal product as well, except for the radome. Um, that's the uh, uh, IP67 rated. It's not plastic. Uh, it's metal. Also has the uh, LED bars on it for alignment. Um, it also uh, has all of the capability for alignment that's included in our VRCLI uh, from automatic uh, uh, antenna alignment, um, toning, um, which is an internal toner. Let's see, what else can I tell you about it? Um, as I mentioned, it ships pretty much as all of our products. There's a quick bridge variant, uh, there's a base station variant and a subscriber variant. Quick bridge variant can be converted to subscribers for scalability. Talk about IP67, some details about the uh, UV rating on the radome, uh, this sure tech finish for salt corrosion, et cetera. Uh, Bluetooth capability, which we're super proud of. Actually, it's kind of funny that the, the, Blue, the Blue Connect interface looks a lot like the, the Dewey interface. So uh, it's got a very similar uh, look and feel to it. It's basically like the Wizard uh, interface with a with slightly more capability. And everything else uh, is pretty much the same uh, as all the products. Uh, what else? Does that answer um, the question? So, Andrew, another question. Um, how does it do four by four with two RF ports? Uh, so it's so there's two antennas, uh, two full antenna capabilities on this radio. Uh, one is the internal, which is a two by two. Uh, uh, antenna capability, and then we have a second antenna capability built into it, which is the external 4x4. So um, if you look at the initial picture here, there's the GPS port in the middle. This uh, is the horizontal and vertical uh, two, uh, single port, and then bottom here, horizontal. See, so it'd be horizontal, vertical, slant, slant. Right, so there's four antenna ports, two top, two bottom, and the GPS port in the middle on the top. It's software configurable. So when you switch from uh, internal uh, antenna operation to external antenna operation, it's a single configuration command in the GUI or in the CLI. So this gives us a tremendous amount of capability for scaling. Uh, which is why it's designed that way. Uh, it also gives us great flexibility in distance, uh, which is very important in some of the remote uh, SCADA and um, uh, IoT center uh, deployments. What All else? right. Any other questions for Andrew? Um, okay, you know what? One more just came in. If we still have a couple more minutes, um, does it 
have the same advanced config like the BSX product, so you can set the sensitivity. So you can set the sensitivity. So it includes the exact same um, capability as the um, BSX. Uh, so you have the advanced GUI, or what we call the admin Let me say we back up. We have the admin GUI, which is our new, um, more graphical um, GUI. Then we have the advanced GUI, also graphical based, but uh, there's a little bit more capability. Now um, we're incorporating every day, we're incorporating more and more of the, of the advanced GUI into the admin GUI so that we'll eventually do away with that. Uh, all capability will be, will be there. So from a sensitivity standpoint, not really sure what's being asked, but if you can do it on the BSX from a, an antenna adjustment, not, not beam steering, but from a, uh, antenna configuration capability, you can do it on the edge. All right. Um, so I think that's the last question, Andrew. Thank you for um, presenting today. No problem. Um, I will send a, a PDF version of the slides uh, for you to post. And um, I thank everyone for attending today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to um, to the folks at uh, Wincom, and the Wincom folks can reach out to the folks at uh, Foxum uh, and answer any questions that you may have. Great, thank okay. you so much. Thank you attendees for, for being with us today and stay safe. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.